pertinent issues relating to the development of our country, our continent, our land. This is where we talk pertinent issues. Remember we said pertinent and not petty. My brother, my sister, I want to say thank you so much for coming along with me on this very precious journey of Pan-Africanism and Consciousness. Can we go into action? Now, top on the agenda, Bulldog arrested by the authorities. My brother, my sister, now it's in the news all over the place that Bulldog, entertainment critic, artist manager, Bulldog, has been arrested by the security authorities for, in quotes, threatening the president. My brother and my sister, now we're told that he was on a TV show and some of us who had the opportunity to look at uh, some of these videos would have come to a certain understanding of why the authorities came down on Bulldog. This is my opinion. Now, Bulldog was on this show, and on the show, they were talking about things that happened in 2020, and how all of them together would be able to make some meaning out of these things for a better 2021. And Bulldog was talking about the men's gold issue. Of course, it happened in 2020. How a lot of people lost their monies, or better still, have not received their monies yet. Monies that they invested in a gold dealership company called Men's Gold, owned by one Nana Apia Mensa, aka Nam One. Now, Nam One have been doing his business for about five years. Paying taxes up to date. Social security, he paid. Other taxes, he paid for five solid years. He was doing his business. Nobody coughed. And according to what we were told, he wrote several times to the authorities to try and regulate the kind of business he was doing. Because he couldn't see it anywhere in the laws. And the authorities were quite reluctant about this. According to what we hear. We even remember. That. All of a sudden. He was told to stop his business. And people who were investing in the business. Were told to stop. Or do it at their own peril. And then. There was this kind of panic withdrawals. Which no bank in Ghana. Can ever stand. If today we have panic withdrawals from the Ghana Commercial Bank, I'm sure within days the bank will be closed. Same thing with any other bank in Ghana. Panic withdrawals hit. Nana Pia Men's answer, Men's Gold. And then it came to an equilibrium. And then below the equilibrium, it crashed. There was a fight between the authorities and Men's Gold customers and Nana Pia Mensa himself. Now, the rest is history. Bulldog simply said, listen, if the president of Ghana, Nana Kufuado, does not find a way of paying men's gold customers, he will run. I'm quoting from what is in the media. He will not finish his four years. And at that point, there were so many interjections from another panelist on the show. And wise people will realize that even though Bulldog was trying to make a point, the interjections were so much and the host of the show did not also revisit it so that Bulldog would be able to clarify what he meant by he will run. He will not finish his four years. Any other person who watched the team, watch it critically, Anytime he tried to explain, there was an interjection. And the interjection came from a voice that was louder than his voice. And he was getting quite frustrated and so on and so forth. So me, 
standing from afar, these words, as you might read from the media, if he doesn't find a way of paying the men's gold customers, he will run. He will not finish his four-year term. My brother, my sister, will sound threatening. But, my brother, my sister, it behoves on Bulldog to explain to the satisfaction of the whole nation as to what he meant by he will run. He will not finish his four-year term. My brother, my sister, we are waiting for the authorities to come out and let us know. But, uh, let me also look at it in another direction. If the president does not find a way of paying men's gold customers, he will run. He will not finish his four-year term. And swiftly, Bulldog was taken away. His languishing in some kind of custody, awaiting the authorities to say, go home or go to the court or whatever it is. My brother, my sister, much as we condemn rash utterances, rash behavior in the media and even outside the media, I would like to bring our understanding and bring our love to this country. Remember I said, much as we condemn rash utterances on the radio, the TV, in public, and even outside the public, my brother, my sister, we should let the laws of this country work. We should let the laws of this country work. Honorable Kennedy Japan sits on TV, on radio, and talks as if he owns all the power in the world that he's so untouchable. So, so, so overly untouchable. The man who is trying to make, in his own words, the laws in Ghana work, says that the courts and the judges are foolish, they are stupid, and he will deal with them. A man who sits back and says he will burn the former president alive and burn his house and burn some other people. My brother, my sister, the authorities did not come on him. Yes, he apologized the next day. I am sure if Bulldog is given the opportunity, he will apologize from now till the end of his life. After all, apologies are so cheap in this country. Any Tom, Dick, and Harry with no brains in his head can say anything at all and apologize one million times. After all, apologies in this country are easily forgotten and nowhere would you see it on the face of the person that he apologized. So it has become a penchant, my brother, my sister, of all these politicians to say whatever they want to say and right after that, after they have so much misbehaved, they come back and utter some few words of an apologist of an apology. We have seen it with Carlos Ayinkra. If I was the president of the country, I would be so ashamed to have this man still lingering around my party. If I was the president of this country, I would be so ashamed that all these people make so much noise and the law becomes a barking, in fact, a toothless barking bulldog. Where are we taking this country to? The banana land? Do we want to quickly call it a banana republic? And in which way, let me ask you, if the country becomes a banana republic, which kind of people are, are, are going to live in this country? Monkeys? Because it's monkeys that are related to banana, right? If this country any day becomes a banana republic, we all in this country will become monkeys. If you don't want to be called a monkey, it's time to stand up and prevent this country from deaccelerating into the status of a banana country. My brother, my sister, 
The same people that you vote into the parliament house. People who are supposed to make sure the laws are working. They are the same people breaking these laws with impunity. Sit on radio and behave like the almighty. Sit on TV and behave like the almighty. And your old, old, old sleeping president will not be even awake to see what is happening in this country. You think this is normal? You think the way the country is so quiet with impunity. People saying whatever they want to say with no brains, no sense. We will ban the former president. Nanando will one day become a former president. If any idiot comes out to say that he will burn the former president, Nana Ado, we all will rise like columns of mercury in the mercury thermometer. We will all rise to fight against this impunity. If Nana Ado today sits down sleeping because it has become his hobby at his age, people like this sleep. All day, all night. My brother, 76 is not a, is it 77? 77 is not a joke. You should be lucky to reach 77. So if a 77 year old man is sleeping, give him his peace. He's been working from when he was 20. Now he's 77. It is his right to sleep. It's possible the president hasn't even heard what Mr. Ejapon said. It's possible he hasn't heard what Chairman Wun to me said. These are the people who are playing the Almighty in this country and bringing all the embarrassment to the president of this country. If I sit down and don't talk about what Kennedy Japan says and does, I will be so ashamed and embarrassed despite our relationship that tomorrow some other person will say that and I, Black Rasta, will come out and make all the noise. Selective justice, animal farm. No, sir. It's nothing personal. When we talk, we talk. Because we have to talk. When I hear Canada Japan these days speak on TV and radio, I sit back and say, do we have laws in this country? Do we have laws? You said the same things and Ahmed Swale lost his life. Now you have gone several notches higher to talk about burning no other person but a former president who ruled this country for over four years. That you would burn him. He's stupid. He's a stupid idiot. He has no sense. He's whatsoever. I have never heard anybody in this country from the days of Kwame Nkrumah insult a former president the way Canada Japan insulted Mahama. Openly. He apologized. But my brother, my problem is if apologies happen to be the key to every handcuff, then no handcuff would ever be closed in this country. Can I utter that again? I am saying if, if apologies become the key to unlocking every handcuff in this country, there would never be a close handcuff on anybody's hands. We are so good at apologizing. Even giving you money, we apologize. Me pa cho tu si bibi wa I beg go, I get some food, come chop oh. I beg my sister this, you know go marry him. Everything we say in this country, we start with an apology. So apologies have lost their value. Apologies have lost their value in this country, my brother, my sister. Can I Japan say, I appreciate that. And until I remember better radio swa or mukacha will say, tone down. You are losing your admirers because you are playing the Almighty. Tone down. If you don't, and Nanado, as for him, he's asleep. Fast as what that? How would he know what is happening in the country when he's asleep? We are waiting for him to wake up so that we can go out to him and tell him, oh, uh, last two weeks, this was what happened. You've been sleeping for over one month now. We waited for you to sleep. Can we talk to you now, sir? Your colleague, you say, the account people have a saying that when you see 
your, your, your neighbor's beard burning. Get water ready for yours. If a former president can be insulted, maltreated, and whatever, like this, and you, a sitting president, human rights lawyer, I hear there's no certificate that he has, but well, I don't know. Human rights lawyer, a man who celebrated and organized a national funeral for an African American who was gunned down, George Floyd. Congratulations. A man who instituted the year of return for all black people in the diaspora, Rasta people say, Livaspora, to come home. Ah, great president. So, so, so extraordinarily brilliant. Year of return. Oh my God, have mercy. It's not easy to think that. The man who stood before the French prime minister and told him right in his face that, listen, we are beyond aid, Ghana and Africa. Take your aid away. Ha! A man like that, don't joke with him. All of a sudden, in his own country, seven people or so gunned down during the election, not even a word of condol condolence. Oh, it's free and fair. It's the best elections we have ever had with seven people gunned down under your very eyes. No words of condolence. But you had several millions of words of condolence for an African-American who died several millions of miles away from your home, Ghana. You organized a state funeral. And when even another body decided to organize a vigil, you got the people arrested because you said it was illegal. You wanted your funeral to stand up. Your own people are dying. Listen. Until Africans, black people in Africa, until their lives matter to our African leaders, black lives matter should be a matter for only black people in the diaspora. You have no right. You have no moral right. You cannot moralize it on anybody, my brother, my sister. When your own citizens are gunned down, slaughtered night and day, denied basic amenities and facilities for survival. And you come out and say, Black Lives Matter, funeral. You must be a joker. Look what is happening all over Africa. Cameroon, an old dying man, 90-something years old, is slaughtering the people in Cameroon. And African leaders are quiet. See how many people are dying in Cameroon because of useless leaders like Bia. Look at Guinea. How many people went down the drain? All because of another dying old man who was invited recently to this country. My brother, my sister. All these lives don't matter. One man's life, George Floyd. Because you wanted to be part of the party. You wanted to be what we say, follow fashion. You want to follow, follow, follow. Nigerian people will say, follow, not follow, follow, be that. And we should share self-arrangement. Do you know George Floyd's mother? Do you know George Floyd's uncle? Do you know where George Floyd comes from? Do you know his original name? You don't know that. But the people who were gunned down were very, very young people with promising futures. No words of condolence. I heard some people say, oh, they are NDC people. Since when have we become NDC and MPP? This is the truth you don't like. When we speak the truth, you send hoodlums and drug addicts to come after us. Whoever tells you we are scared of them, hallelujah, must go and rewrite. My God. Listen, the people in the ghetto must have their right. The people all over. You see, they are not able to do thing, fuck all, because we don't go to them begging them for anything. I, Black Rasta, I don't have respect for any one of them. Why on earth would I go to any minister or any and say, I want Foko, call out, no, sir. Mina night. That is why they cannot open their mouths and say it is. Others are quiet because they have bought them. Let them come out and say it. Not Mahama, not Nanado, not, not President Kufu, none of them. Ghetto man, if I'm angry, I go to the ghetto. There is watcher there that uh, I can eat. Two other fish there from yesterday. I don't mind who blow it. After all, man must not live by bread alone. 
Let me not moralize it on anybody. I'll go on to the next thing and deal with it right now. My, my brother, my sister, have you realized that after the parliamentary nonsense, the fight over ballot papers, the jingoisms, the gymnastics, the foolishness that happened in the Ghanaian parliament, these are the same people that brought me to the parliament house seeking to embarrass me that I said that 80% of these people smoke marijuana. Hey, smoking marijuana is not better than stealing ballot boxes and ballot papers. When are we going to have you drag all those thieves to the parliament house to apologize? After all, apologies have become keys to every padlock and every handcuff in Ghana. Say, you see, Obi shit in Tampia. And I say, Obi a Kronfoa. They are in there. And that, more legalizing Tampino. More legalizing Tampino. More legalizing Krono also. Because I don't saw you the thing of the time. Think about it, my brethren. You have legalized marijuana. The one that you guys were so angry that I said that you smoke. And called me seeking to disgrace me. Today you have legalized it. Right? How about the theft? Legalize thievery too. So that we know that it's a country of thieves. It's a country of 30 million thieves. We all are thieves. It's legalized. Have you realized that after all these jingoisms... Now, both parties are saying, oh, Alban Bagbin is actually the best. In fact, yes, yes, he's good. He's the best. In fact, he's the best. Even the so-called majority from the last parliament saying that, oh, they actually planned to make Alban Bagbin the speaker. They are so good at that, politicians. These guys, they have no respect for themselves. They have no respect for the truth. They have no respect for honesty. I am yet to see Diligent, minded, honest, and truthful politicians in Africa. My brother, you were fighting for an all, 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 old man. With all respect, Professor Akwe. Akwe is a man I love. I will hug him and run errands for him any day. I love him. An all, 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 old man. Professor Okwe. In fact, I started blinking an eye when he regarded Nkrumah as an invitee, a mere invitee, and that he was one of the founders. I said, oh, Professor Okwe, have these people fed you with their political poison too? But leave that aside. Professor Okwe, all, 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 this is the time some of us should go and sow seeds under his feet so we can also live and be old like him. But you dragged him from his old age couch, pulled him out of the couch for him to sit in parliament again for another four years. The day he was descending from his car, it took almost three and a half hours for him to step down. And there were people who surrounded the cars ready to carry him. So in Ghana, you prefer employing one old man and 20 other hangers on around him because he's too old to even fetch water to drink. In Ghana, they prefer to employ one old man and have 20 hang-ons around him to fetch him water to brush the mosquito that is biting his forehead because before he would even raise his hand to the mosquito, the mosquito would have drank about seven gallons of blood. They prefer that. One employment, they would have to get 20 to 50 other people around him, some of them to wipe the sweat off his face, some of them to carry him to the bathroom and toilet. That was what they wanted to do to Professor Okwe. They fought. If Alban Bagwin was actually the best, why did you not all stand up to say, hey, listen, let's all vote for Alban Bagwin. But you are thieves who were stealing ballot papers, running around like, like uh, Ali Baba and his 40 thieves in the parliament. 
Let's be wise. My brother and my sister, this is no insult. Let's come to the bargaining table and reason. It's a critical thinking society. We are not fools. We are brains. The fact that you have not been to school doesn't mean you have no brain. You can think. Global Edusai did it. What kind of school did he attend? Huh? My brother and my sister, it is time for the youth to think critically. Yes. It is time for the youth to think critically. Or else we all would be in trouble. Let us continue to think. If we don't, nobody will think for us. My brother and my sister, it is time to open our ears and see what is happening and hear what is happening or else we will all drain into the biggest abyss that the Titanic has never even visited yet. It's been the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo. And I want to say thank you so much. I appreciate you. I thank you for the love. I thank you for the energy. I thank you for always standing by me. I thank you for the love. I thank you for the honesty. And I thank you for everything. In the interim, we still haven't heard from the police. This is one week now since the assailant came here to assassinate me. We have not heard from the East Legon police. Please update us. We would like to know how far you have gone so that at least we will know that we are truly safe. Until then, Ghana shall prosper. Yeah, yeah, feels like stunning.